Welcome back to Always Almost There, a Goose podcast series by Storm Sound and Osiris Media. I'm Brian, aka Jive Goose. I'm Ryan. I'm Neil. And I'm High and Tight Kev. The four of us are here today to talk about the Jotty Bracket and to discuss and look ahead to what we have coming up for spring tour. Summer tour, too. Uh, I get to, Technically, most of it's in the spring, but... Is it? What, what are they calling it? Summer tour. Okay. So is there a spring tour? First day of summer is in June. This is not... Did we just leak spring tour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people listening don't think that we have any intel on anything, because this is it. It's technically in the spring. I heard they're, uh, I heard they're doing fiddlers. Is this big if true? It's exciting stuff. The great, yeah, your, your chance to meet Jive Goose this summer will be on June 7th and 8th at Fiddler's. Yeah. It's, it's overrated. Open, open invitation to the Dome. Oh. <laughs> Normally, you know, a trip to Colorado means you get to see like a bucket list venue. Not this summer. No. You're going to Fiddler's Green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. It's going to be great. So. Colorado, we'll see. We'll see if we'll see if Colorado bias can you know outweigh that venue. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get to talking about tour. But I, I'm excited to be here. Uh, with you gents you know a rare episode that will hopefully be under four hours long if we do this right but we are going to talk a little bit about the recent wrap-up of the 2023 jam of the year bracket it's a very exciting competition this year and before we dive in at all just want to send out a huge huge thank you to every person that got involved in any fashion whether you you know only voted for portland hot tea to piss me off in that one matchup or you were dedicated and involved in every single matchup for the whole thing. We appreciate you getting involved, making this the best competition we've done yet out of the four. Good involvement. The comment section was... Wow. Peter's dog, Rufus, uh, made, made some appearances <laughs> towards the end. There was there was a yeah. lot of great people. You know, the... Uh, Ex-presidents. The, yeah, Eastern European bot farms. Like, there, there was a lot... There was a lot of great stuff in the comment section. Entire kitchen staffs. Yeah, kitchen staffs. I, I was commenting on days when I wasn't even commenting, which is amazing. <laughs> meal at AOL.com. Send him an email, guys. <laughs> yeah, I was That's gonna meal. I was just gonna say there were some Vickers comments that I know weren't I know it wasn't Vickers. <laughs> <laughs> somebody you know I mean? found somebody found his email. It's that that's like one of the rare occasions where you won't where you can't blame Vicar. I guess you now you can still blame him for you that. Can blame yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if it wasn't for him, people wouldn't be impersonating him. Yeah. So. And, and, and we can tell because these are posts that were made seven fifteen Eastern Standard Time, and he's already been no in way. bed for two. Yeah, hours. that's not yeah. him. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you got a VPN. You got to you got to get the early bird VPN. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Vickers, Vickers is all about the early bird special. He can't wait. He can't wait until he turns sixty-five so he can take advantage of all of uh, you know the senior discounts that happened early in the day. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there are so many people to thank on this. There are people who took the ball and ran with it and spread this among different social media platforms. There are folks like posting it in El Goose on Facebook, which is awesome. And you know, it, it's a little bit of masto action. That was, I mean, like, that's amazing. One of those people, real quick, if I could shout out somebody specifically, Neil, don't know her well, but Maxine Shannon. Yes. Uh, that kind of sort of took the ball on Facebook and, and really did a lot of posting, made sure that the polls were up and being shared every day. So big thanks to her. Huge. Yeah. Shout and out. big thanks to the folks at WTED Radio, Wisteria Lane Message Board. Thank you. Those guys. folks yeah, were yeah. every day playing it and they were generating conversation about that. And, it's, you know, this is all like super exciting stuff because this is for me, really special because the 2020 bracket is really what solidified my excitement about this band. And you just see it happening and it's getting bigger and it's snowballing and more and more people are getting involved and participating mm -hmm. and having these conversations. And it's just really exciting stuff. You know, the J jam of the year bracket is not about the winner, even though we're about to announce debatable. Winners. And it's not about the matchups. It's about listening to the music and talking with your friends about it. I was going to say, it it's year. about the, it's, it is truly about the friends that you made along the way. Yeah, it really is. The formula dictates. The dictator formulates. And and speaking of which, huge, huge thank you to good friend of the pod, Adam at 6ROM7 on Twitter. Oh, yeah. yeah. For all his hard work creating the formula, making us able to do the bracket the way we were this year. And, and also, again, like specifically for Adam, just enhancing everybody's experience 
by aggregating all this data and yeah. releasing periodic updates about you know, different things that are hella interesting, like not just from a, you know, we love these jams sort of standpoint, but it's just, it's just cool to get all that information. Yeah. And if people want to go check that stuff out, all of his statistics and things are on his Twitter at six R zero M seven. We need to, we need to take a note for next year and we need to get, we need to get him on to kind of talk through that side of thing. Formula. Yeah. The well, formula. no, just like all the stuff that he's doing in the stats. I mean, I think, I think he could he could do like a really nice PowerPoint presentation on behind the curtain. Mm, I like it. Well, we can talk about the stats, but the formula pod would be around three seconds long. I just think that it, I just think it'd be cool to talk to people like uh, and, and and other people that we can think of that just to get their perspective on the bracket and yeah what that what they're doing. You know what I mean? Because he's putting in time for that. You know what I mean? Like that's. I don't know how many hours he put in. You know what I mean? Maybe more than maybe more than me, <laughs> but probably surely more than me. Yeah, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people are saying you dialed it in this year, B. I think, I think a lot of people are saying a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> I think there's some. I, I think. I think. Yeah, we should just kind of take a mental note of that because I think that there's other people also that it would be cool to just have on and just do kind of, you know, a conversation about. You know, different perspectives because ours is really just like this jam is so dope you know what i mean and like he hit the clav you know at eight minutes <laughs> well, <laughs> like, i mean that's just ryan's angle pretty much always but yeah <laughs> yep so i think it'd be cool and and i like talking about that stuff too but I, th I think it definitely would be cool in bracket season to like kind of mix it up a little bit you know with with some of these other folks that are involved in different ways so absolutely and I, you know, I mean, we can talk about all this all day, uh, but I think we should move on to the bracket itself. This is the the fourth year in a row that we've done a jam of the year bracket, and this is the second time and first since 2020 where a non one seed has won the bracket. It's really interesting to look at. Congratulations, of course, to the Philly Echo for taking home the crown this year. It's, it's interesting when you see a lower rated jam like that win the whole thing, despite the uh, the bump it was given. On Valentine's Day by oh, a certain what do you mustachioed mean? man. Oh, I think it makes you think maybe we shouldn't have him on during the bracket. You know, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but it, it, it's interesting though. You know, and, and you say like lower. I guess it's. I think it was a lower rated jam. You know, and and I had it like twelfth overall, I think, and it came in at seventh overall through the crowd seeding. Ended up a two seed, obviously, and then, but. I find I do find it interesting, you know. What I mean, it goes to show that, like there's a lot of people voting who aren't submitting seedings, obviously. I mean, that's clear. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, interesting stuff. The the overall seven, that's that's a lot of heavy hitters, you know. That it didn't necessarily beat out head to head, but yeah, you know, Philly, dude, Philly represents uh, historically. There's a lot of really good goose uh, here we go. uh, shows and jams that have come out of Philly, but Philly hunger site, you know. Uh... Nobody talks you know, about that one. The interesting thing about the Philly Echo is that I think of all the jams that I listen to dozens of times now, dozens and dozens. And then as you go through the bracket, if you're listening every day, I mean, you're hearing these songs a ton. It's it's actually kind of wild how much you hear those songs over the course of a month. But something about the Philly Echo is that it just gets better every time I listen to it. And maybe that is what pushed it over the edge. It just gets crazier. Every time I listen to it, it's just like, oh man, like I'm crazier now than the, the last time I listened to it. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's maybe a matter of perspective. I'm not really sure. But I, yeah, it's it grew on me more and more as the, the bracket season went on. I, I will say that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that too. And, and I would actually say like, all joking aside, after hearing Peter, you know, really fluffing it, I was like... All right, I need to go, I need to go check it out again. But but he actually gave us some really good insights into kind of some things that were happening and why it stands out so much to him. And that mm -hmm. did make me I think take a closer listen. And and it's a it's a complex jam in a way that do, it, it doesn't seem that way. You this is a jam you could listen to and be like and that, I think this was my initial reaction to this jam a long time ago was and it, it kind of just does one thing. You know what I mean? Like for the, for the most part, you know what I mean? But it, 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 there really is there really is more going on, and I, still not my jam of the year. But 
I definitely wasn't. It picked up steam clearly coming coming into the Sweet Sixteen and, and, and beyond. So I mean, I wasn't. By the time we got to the finals, I think the writing was on the wall a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 good. And and you know, you could you could talk a little bit about like San Francisco Wisteria. You know, that's you know that that's not the most complex jam of that year with with different twists and turns and whatever. So. It didn't have to be Seattle Echo, it turns out. You know what I mean? Even though that one had it had the most, and it was great. But, you know, that does – look, I, th- that's what the voters, I think, proved this year. And 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 speaking of all the data, you know, that Adam's providing, I, the, I find the, the data really interesting around length of song and kind of success in the bracket and things like that. And I think a lot of people feel like there's more bias than there is towards longer songs. And so – this was a this was a huge blow to that theory. I mean, just echo going out like that. And I think in hindsight, looking at the bracket, just going back and looking at a blank bracket, I feel like a Philly Echo versus Hunger Salt matchup was kind of inevitable, just based on the popular opinion of all the jams in the bracket. You know, I feel like the the Bonner Thatch never really had the support to make it past Hunger Salt. The Seattle Echo, right or wrong, I mean, yeah. right or wrong, and I've heard this from other people as well, right or wrong. Thatch just got played too much, and I and I think people yeah, had that. I, th- I think people had Thatch fatigue, man. No, no such thing. I've disagreed with that sentiment entirely, but also the do do you have people telling you that? Because I do. Yes, yes. The absolute disaster that was the Inferno Prime region, and I when I say disaster, I mean disaster. What 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 um, specifically made yeah. it a disaster? Yeah, let lay out some evidence uh, here. What? Specifically, the Portland T that jam. And what happened to it? You know, it was this year's Legend Valley Creatures. But unlike the Legend Valley Creatures. That's an insult to Legend Valley Creatures. Yeah. Yeah, fair. <laughs> and hopefully hopefully, we've learned some campaigning lessons here, Ryan. I don't know if anyone noticed, but I went completely silent pretty much after that and didn't really campaign for anything. <laughs> yeah, that's just going to encourage people to do it again. People won't know that what jams I like and what <laughs> I care about. Not everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not subtle, but my, my point being, my point being about the inevitability of a hunger salt Philly echo matchup is going into the bracket, despite what the seating indicated and what the formula dictated, those are the two jams with the biggest followings, I think in the community. And those were going to, going to be the ones where you saw constant posts and people sharing stories about the jams and why they love them so much and uh, sharing clips and, you know, memes and whatever Vickers switching sides between the two of them like the whole whole thing none of none of the other jams really had that kind of support you know portland t was like the cult following of the of the bracket and you know like pushed it past the rightful jam of the year thank you to louisville born supporters for doing the right thing getting that i did that's that's one of the things that surprised me most about the bracket is that's not a jam that i expected to see in the final four i i was just gonna say the same thing yeah, I, did, I, I honestly, and and part of that. So I, I had it, I had it losing to to Ryman Madavan, and that's the one that really surprised me because I just, man, I didn't, I didn't. That's the one that was by one vote. There's so many, there's so many. Yeah, yeah, it was, so, it was fifty fifty point one to forty nine point nine. There's just, there's historically been so much Madavan support in the bracket that. Really, really, for that reason. Plus, it's a great jam. But being a great jam and being mad about it, I, I thought there was no way Bourne was going to beat it. So that that was a big, that was a really big surprise. And good, good job by that Bourne, which I really, I really like that jam. So mm-hmm. yeah, final four. I mean, yeah, really interesting final four. You know, I think Hunger Side, no, no surprise there. Although not at all. I think I had, I think I had picked Drive over. Over hunger site personally, but but no surprise that hunger site's there. Everything must go. Yeah, I mean, not a huge surprise. I guess a little surprise that Thatch didn't didn't do as well. Yeah, but. I, I I honestly I I had Madison Wisteria over everything must go as well. I think that that was another I really close one, especially uh, once we once we hit the Sweet Sixteen, we started to see some really really close matchups everywhere, uh, which is really cool. That's not something we've seen a ton of in the past. There have been some. But usually only a couple per round. A lot of them were pretty clear cut. But like 
you know, Madison Wisteria versus Everything Must Go was, you know, a difference of 0.3%. You know, the, the only Sweet 16 matchup that was more than a 10% difference was Philly Echo versus Eugene Empress. Yeah, there were so definitely, pretty- yeah, there were definitely a couple matchups that were, uh, you know, a, a handful of restaurant employees away from flipping. <laughs> There was a there was an interesting perspective that uh, Madison Huvan brought up in the chat when we were talking about these things that uh, if every if that everything must go from Red Rocks had been played at Madison and the Wisteria had been played at Red Rocks, then the Wisteria would have won. See, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. I really am, because I think you have four people right now on this podcast who are all present for the everything must go. And I, I, I can't speak for you, Kevin, because I don't know which, which you voted, but I think Ryan and Jive both had that Madison Wisteria moving on, right? And I did as well. And I, think sure. I, had the, I think I had the Everything Must Go a little higher, and it's a jam. Again, ah. it's, a ja- it's a jam that I go back to, and I, I, I listen to it but often. So I, I don't agree with the Colorado bias part, even though I'm a, a big-time accuser of Colorado bias, <laughs> um, because <laughs> oh, I am. You. But, but I, I really... That one got carried in because people were excited about it. That jam is something to be excited about. You might not like Dark Goose. Fine. So if you don't, you have I to do. kind of step out of this conversation <laughs> and say, like, well, I don't like Dark Goose, whatever. You should probably go, you should probably go sit down and question a lot of things that you believe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you should maybe just, like, listen to more Dark Goose until you come around. I don't know. But but still, so, so all right, like you already don't like that stuff. But the people who do like the Dark Goose really, really like the Dark Goose. So it's not, I don't think this is a Colorado bias situation. I, I think this is, folks heard a unique jam inside of a song that was completely unexpected. The song had come to fruition in ways that people really wanted it to. And in a way that was really exciting. So to see that carried in, I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed because I, I think that Madison Wisteria was better. It was a really good jam. And yeah. I would have loved to have talked about that one, maybe even all the way into the final. You you might, I was just going to say, you might say that Red Rocks Everything Must Go is the Philly Echo of that side of the bracket. I would need, if you're going to do that analogy. But... I request <laughs> elaboration. <laughs> I think those are, I think those are the two dark, the, Thatch also would be in there. But when you talk about like the big dark jams. I guess built around one idea. Now, Neil and I, after Red Rocks Night 2, one of the biggest things we were talking about, like that night, listening back to the Everything Must Go, we said it's like, oh, it's like Philly Echo, but it's more efficient. Like it's a really dark jam, one idea, and it's like 12 minutes shorter. I immediately slotted that in my playlist right in front of Philly Echo. And I was present for both. I was at both shows, so. Yeah. There's no attendance bias. So that's what I meant by one might say. Just Vickers bias on the Philly Echo, though. Like you weren't with Vickers at Red Rocks. Gazing into each other's ever. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think there was any of that, but there there was a lot of jumping. There's a lot of yelling. I mean, the, there's video on there. You can hear me like absolutely losing my mind. He posted it to Twitter. It's great. There's audio of me just like going nuts. And Rally Madavan is a dark jam. And a bliss jam. It did both. I mean, that's how you win everybody, right? It's is you take the, the Philly Echo yeah. and then you put the Portland T together, and then that, that's how you win the jam of the year. So it shouldn't surprise <laughs> us to see these darker jams like doing so well with you know, with the voters. Absolutely. I'm a big proponent and I will always vote for them. Another interesting thing to me, you know, we talked about the Thatch, the the Bonner Thatch not making it into the Elite Eight even, but the the Louisville arrow moving past the Bonner Thatch was really a surprise because regardless of Thatch fatigue, that was still a jam that had a lot of support in the bracket at, at, at all turns, you know, heading into the competition crown jam of the year by a bunch of people for a I while. Would, I would bet the you end. that there's a lot of overlap between the people that supported that Louisville arrow and did not like, or, or did not prefer uh, that thatch. Well, and, Speaking of of that arrow, I think just on a side note, we're we're gonna enhance the backend security uh, next year just to <laughs> no voting at restaurants. Like if you're at restaurant Wi-Fi, it's not gonna it won't tell your vote. You have to register your IP with us before the competition next year. Uh, yeah. You can only vote from that one. Well, so so you now that this is brought up, like I, I think this is a good time to talk about it because before the bracket began, I did a lot of thinking. We did a lot of thinking. Hey, hey, about- Neil, Neil, I I just real quick, let me interrupt you. I I, I want to shout you out right now because of all the fucking work that you put in uh, to change the voting platform 
uh, to find the service that would support it, uh, to make it look like it did. I mean, fucking kudos to you. It was oh, a thanks. significant improvement over what we had last you, year and the year before. Yes. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I don't I don't think I deserve the amount of credit you just gave me. But well, I, I take it all back. That. Fuck you, Neil. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So I, I will say this. We, we did a lot of thinking about it. We did a lot of talking about it. Certainly the five of us did for sure. And a choice was made, right? We were going to include as many people as we could in this. We were going to we were going to post this on every social media platform. We were certainly not going to drive people to Twitter. That felt like a bad choice. Um, and, and, you know, separating the bracket from Twitter felt really important to all of us, right? So this is the choice that we made. It also felt really important to not put it behind a login because we wanted yeah. people to vote. It was really, really important. And I think we've gotten that feedback. Folks are like, there was there was cheating. There was collusion. This should be behind a login. And like, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Yeah. I think if you want to mess with any of these competitions, any of these online voting platforms, you can find a way. If you yeah. really, really you, want to, if you want to but, put in the effort to spoil the jam of the year bracket, like uh, th- sure. Like more and, power and if to that you. seems like yeah. fun to you. I'm surprised Great. first of all, yeah. but my point is I really like the way this voting platform worked out. Um, I think it did exactly what we knew it was going to do. I think it also had the shortcomings we knew it was going to have. And I don't know. I think everything just worked out. And I think the voting this year was awesome. Because I think mm-hmm. it generated conversations in places that didn't exist before. Folks are talking about it on like WTED. They're talking about it on Twitter. They're talking about it on Facebook, Instagram. Exciting stuff. In the comment section. Yeah. Oh, so wait, one last piece about the, the voting. So when you, when you do look at the voting, right, and like there's accusations of bot farms and things like that. If you look on the back end, in the, the back end security, <laughs> like the people who are voting, they're mostly all North American votes. So there are people who are not like enlisting bot farms in like Russia to like vote for things. So like I want to put that to rest right now. Yeah, we do have a significant contingent in South Africa, but we're not looking. Yeah, no, actually, you know what's really interesting? I'm glad you said that because this is my opportunity to shout out the people who are voting in different locations. There's somebody who voted religiously from Germany. Thank you. Sweden. Sweden. Uh, Thank you. Australia. Thank you. Canada. Thanks, mate. Thanks, There's like mate. a guy who voted all the time from Mexico. <laughs> Don't really care about that guy. I mean, so, but yeah, I mean, Gracias. in general, <laughs> like, uh, it's exciting to see where like these folks who are religiously like showing up and, and voting in the we polls. Had some, we had some day. Australia. Did we say Australia? Yeah, I did say Australia. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Twice. Who's, uh? Yeah. so there's like a friend of the pod in like Sweden or something, Ryan, that you met in Europe. Yeah, Copenhagen. Yeah. He was voting. No, oh, dad, it, he was all, he was all over it. So thanks to those folks. Really, we appreciate those folks. Thanks for getting involved. Someone, I, someone probably voted from France. Merci. Yes, we did. You're get just you're just looking France. for more. Do you want to? Do you have any other languages you want to say thank you? In? <laughs> do we do we by chance have a like a percentage increase in bracket participation year over year? No. So we we had a decrease this year, but something we said repeatedly whenever this was brought up by people like, oh, you know, you moved it off Twitter, and now there's way less people involved. Well, the thing is, when the polls are on Twitter, any random person who gets sure, the poll sure. thrown into their feed by the algorithm is probably just going to click a button. Like you're scrolling by, they're like, ah, I don't, I don't, really I don't do that. You're not on Twitter. When I and was, so I was, spe- I was specifically referring to like will submitted that. brackets, Ryan. Oh yeah. So yeah, we had, we had 85. Oh, sorry for, for the challenge or for the seating. So for the uh, seating, like how many people submitted? Yeah. It? I was actually like just percentage wise. We were like, up about thirty, per, up about thirty two percent year over year. Yeah. Our goal is a hundred for next year, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I do like that it's now like not on Twitter. Like I will say this about there are a lot of brackets on Twitter. Decentralized. Twitter. Yeah. To Ryan's point, you see those polls come up. If you're not really super invested in it, you might vote for anything. Just to kind of mess with them, like, oh, I'll vote for the 16 seed versus the one seed, you know? Like, I see the the uh, the Grateful Dead bracket come up every day, and it's just like Samba in the Rain versus the other one. Uh, I'm Samba thinking Samba in the Rain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I'm going for. Math um, for math will be on your side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, there's that temptation though. Like, if you're not invested in the bracket, you know, you you might just kind of throw out an errant vote. Yeah. So I think. In years past, we got a lot of those kinds of votes. Now we don't have those. So the participate participation is down. 
but the quality of uh, a, is up. yeah. It's a net. It's a net positive. When yes. you're referencing participation, are you specifically talking about raw vote totals? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and we had over 120 people submit for the prediction challenge this year. You know, for their chance to win the coveted Golden Strange Man. Oh, that's a great segue. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, using data and stats to segue. Listen, that's like that's, that's like here. creatures into Kylie level quality. <laughs> well, we had we had a, an amazing competition this year. Uh, you know, shout out to everybody who submitted. But there can only be one winner, and for the second year in a row, amazing. Holy moly! Our second year. Is he in a cheating? Row, we don't know. Uh, if he wins next year, uh, you know, we'll do a little bit of inspection into. Uh, What's going on? But Uncle Fred's Jive, a.k.a. Emmett, shout out to you for taking home your second Golden Strange, man. Holy moly. That's that's crazy. It is crazy. It's not easy to do. No. Like, I actually kind of tried this year, and I did terribly. I was in the top ten for pretty much the whole thing, and then in the final four, I just dropped out, and I finished in 50th. That's not, let's not shift the focus from Emmett's repeat to, to ryan's 47th place finish we don't even know what exactly they were. i'm just saying i'm just saying a lot happened emmett wasn't in like he was he was going in and out of the top 10 for a lot of the competition and then it came you know finals day and he was in third and if hunger salt won yeah bro had echo. taking it but if Billy echo won that was it was his and well, like if you've ever done a bracket before you know that all that matters is how you do it at the end yeah. Right. Yeah. You can be crushing it for the first two rounds. It doesn't matter. All that so matters. Is the final yeah. Point. The points get bigger. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. We we need to have him on at some point. Maybe next yeah. year's. But maybe he can give some pointers to yeah, other people. The challenge. <laughs> How to predict? Uh, he can come on. You know, with with both of his strange men. We're excited. You know about about the winners this year, uh, and so he will he will receive that once Neil is able to. You know, get spray paint going. Is that uh, in, we'll your, it's in your possession? Him. Is it in your possession, Neil? We are being supplied the strange men through channels. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's, we, we have not received them yet. Okay. So <laughs> our current inventory is zero. But and, we, no, yeah, but just just yeah. in case people are worried, we are we are stocking up. We will have. Don't tell them the exact number. For <laughs> a number of years. Years to come. About forty. Uh, about forty years. <laughs> Yeah, yep. Neil, is, Neil is for sure. Neil is Maybe actually uh, Neil's Neil's kids will be sharing a room henceforth to make room for all the strange men coming into his house <laughs> next year. Everybody in the top twenty gets a strange man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uncle Fred's jive, what like in twenty years is going to have like twenty two of these. Yeah, he's gonna need <laughs> they, <laughs> turns out they weren't they weren't selling, <laughs> <laughs> which is probably explains why why I can't sell that print either for. I'll hold on to it. Well, oh, yeah, when are we yeah. going to get that movie just on? Yeah, wide, man. Wide Y'all release, need to release you know what shenanigans. What the? I think it's on. It's somewhere. I think it's. I think it's on the Coda Collection. I was going to say, is it not on Coda Collection, Ryan? I mean, this is time for you to do a plug here. There's excellent copy, by the way, on Coda Collection. If you want to go to uh, the Coda Collection to watch uh, Goose performances, copy on it is top notch, best Cap around. Shows. Yeah. Neil Cap shows really good stuff. For- not compensated for that endorsement. So, yeah. so who came in second? Did you already say? Yes. No, I didn't yet. So the second place winner and recipient of their choice of a AAT Storm Sound T-shirt. What's what's they're be, gonna they're uh, gonna want to know what the second choice is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's very exciting. Uh, we are we are awaiting shipping instructions from you. But uh, Rohit, shout out to Rohit for coming in second. Uh, you know, you'll get a get a shirt and in third place and the recipient of hand-picked pins from kev's personal collection that seems like those prizes that need to s- should be swapped i mean yeah <laughs> we're talking about goose official pins oh not indian river pins the f- something official no no, the, no, no nobody that's, said. yeah you're the only one that still has those right. yeah. well Caspian who's in third? Who's in third? Caspian Caspian eighty seven is soon to be one of two people who has those pins. 
congratulations exciting stuff. And, and no, our top do you team. have the top the top do you have the top 10 can you just read them off real quick yeah. just i'll keep reading fourth place friend of the pod mads fifth place wow. peter heller sixth place mark grunstrom seventh place letter bomber eighth place matt for math arrow enthusiast wow yeah ninth place fuck that guy and 10th place. Well, tell us who it Connor is. Hammond. I mean, Dickers, obviously. Dickers. <laughs> Connor Hammond and 10th. Uh, shout out to all Oh, of you. so, you know, this is the interesting stuff. So, so Matt edged out Nikki in the end. Nikki was up there. She was true. She was Nikki, from, Nikki was I would not have guessed. I would not have guessed that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, shout out to Matt and Nikki for the, the battle there. Thanks Sometimes you have a battle involved. with your partner yeah. to see who wins the Jam of the Air Bracket Challenge. And Sometimes. You know, Sometimes you win. I bet, the I bet they, yeah, I bet that was a topic of conversation. Something yeah, that's a, that's a big that's a big deal. Yeah, it was again just an incredible, incredible bracket season. I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, you know, despite the fact that the Portland T made it to the Elite Eight, but so uh, that's it. Anyone else have anything else on the bracket? Before just we thank you. Here? Just thank you to to everybody on in, on all sides. It's fun. You know what I mean? Like it's very it's, fine people on all sides of this bracket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's True. fun. It's fun stuff. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not having fun with the bracket, then just don't vote. Like, you don't have to talk about how you don't like fun. True. Just uh, just abstain from the fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then everybody else yeah. can just enjoy their fun. And and then you you take it a step further. A stretch goal for you might be to f- start finding joy in other in other people's other joy. people's joy. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's the Portland hot tea. I'm, I'm able to find my own joy in the bracket, though. That's the thing. That's the yeah. difference. You know what I mean? Voting ain't gonna get voting ain't gonna get me down. Kidding aside, you know what brings me joy about the bracket is every year at the end of the bracket, somebody who's never participated in it before posts something on Twitter, and they're like, "This was really awesome. I made a bunch of friends doing that. I really enjoyed this." That is the cool part of the bracket. None, of, nothing else man. matters, really. Now that now that we've talked about the bracket, let's use some statistics and numbers to segue into our next topic. Are we transitioning? Uh, yeah, we're 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 moving forward here, and we're going to talk a little bit about when Goose returns to the road in a few months. Welcome uh, back. I can't wait personally. I uh, cannot wait. I, I'm ready for new music. I'm doing. I'm doing twelve shows. shows. In yeah, I'm so ready for new you music. Them now. That okay. I'm, I'm listening we'll, we'll to ten tapes every day. Yeah, Neil, Neil, you say that now. We'll ask you at the end of June how you feel about day after shows. About day after shows, yeah, I'm not gonna feel great about them. Yeah, He's over the true. day after show. But yeah, well, I know, the first I, few just, though are great. You know, <laughs> you yeah. feel really good. <laughs> I'm gonna adjust the time on those. What are we doing? Three Eastern? Is that three Eastern? Three thirty. Three thirty. Oh, three thirty. Um, yeah. Let's. Uh, we'll see. Let's, uh, let, let's let's talk about that another day. Summer um, cat but... don't care. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey yo. Hashtag summer Kev. Um, Hashtag anyway. summer Kev. Yeah. So we've I mean, got. Ooh, that's a good one. We've got we've got a great tour coming up in late spring, early summer. Here, you know, starting at uh, Soulshine Reverie in uh, in Illinois, Never heard of ending it. at Westville, which I was thinking about today. The Westville show will be the first show in Connecticut since. Westville 2022, which is like over two years, which is the longest Goose has ever gone without playing in their home state. Has anything uh, important happened at Westville? To no. Anybody that we know? No. Okay. No. Yeah, no. A couple, couple shoddy versions of oh, uh, no. Seekers. No, no, no. no. You, know, you know what happened? Go to engage, the in Like the famous Butter Rum Mustang Sally Encore. That's legendary. <laughs> yeah. That's legendary <laughs> shit. Or is it Mustang Sally Butter Rum? I can't remember. It's just like it's too, it's too good. I like, I I never listen to it because I want to save how special it feels. You know, I can't yeah. can't ever go back to how I felt watching that webcast. You know, kidding aside, uh, Westville amazing place to see a show, the best pizza in the world, if that's your thing. It's gonna be fun. Uh, you, you have your choice of the best pizzas in the world, and also like New Haven, just not so bad place for a show. It's not a booming metropolis. It's a small city and like, you know, it's easy to get to and from the show. It's going to be exciting stuff. And Westville Music Bowl is just kind of a cool venue. They're they're dedicated to being a music venue that is awesome. So run us, I'm excited for it. I'll be there. Run us through the, the hot stops on this tour real quick. The hot stops? Well, we've Colorado. got, obviously, I said Soulshine Reverie. We got two nights in St. Louis. We got two nights in Colorado. 
We got. What are they doing in St. Louis? Is that the pageant? The factory. Uh, the, the pageant was, yeah, they, I think the factory is a little bigger, yeah. newer yeah, venue. Yeah. Uh, we've got the steel house in Omaha, Nebraska, the old jive goose stomping Ooh. grounds. Yeah. Go big. There's no North Quincy, but yeah. Here to watch goose. Back to, uh, you know, for the second time, the Midland theater in Kansas city, um, formerly the TCU amphitheater in Indy. Now the Everwise amphitheater, uh, Great Indy, for little, a show. Little and and same June twelfth, same same date as the twenty twenty two show. Um, you know, a little little nice hometown show for the Gettys. Northlands yep. in New Hampshire. Did we already talk about Colorado? We did. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna circle back around. Yeah, yeah I just we'll, want to make sure. We'll get back to that. Because we'll yeah, that. a short trip for Colorado. A yeah, lot of time, so and then we head. Sure. We head a little little into the you know upper. Upper New York State area for uh, CMAC near Rochester. Finger Lakes. Uh, Cleveland. Man. Yeah, Finger Lakes area. That's a, a nice venue. Gorgeous. So wine talking. country. Yeah. I mean, get up there. If you wine can. country. Yeah, it is. There's, there's a lot of wine up there. Cleveland. Back to site of the. Oh, and, and of note, CMAC show is on Jam of the Year Day. Cool. Uh, the only date to have two jams of the year, June 15th. So. Uh huh. Eyes on that show. Geekery. And then back actually, to speaking yeah, of, that's a sleeper show, believe it or not. Yeah. When you think about sleeper shows, like I think about, well, actually a jam of the year show. And you think about Harry yeah. way up there in New York on a, like a random stop that I think everybody skipped, you know, going other yeah, places. It was in between two Westville and Legend Valley. It was in yeah. between Westville and Legend Valley though. You know, that's like, that was like, ah, oh, we can, but uh, you know, that, that, that'll Middle be a good one. And Neil and I will be seeing uh, pigeons playing ping pong and green sky bluegrass. Uh, at Northland, yeah, well, that's that happening. Yes, that's, that's, <laughs> that's really going to happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know. Um, and fun. then back to speaking of previous jams of the year, back to the Red Hat Amphitheater in Raleigh. Red Hat. Uh, then, and then only the the second three night run ever in Goose history uh, at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, which is fun. Always, always a treat to get a three night run. I'm I'm look, very looking forward to seeing that. That venue's also pretty legendary. Up to Charlotte for a night, two nights at uh, Thompson's Point in Portland, down oh, to yeah. the Man in Philly, and then Forest Hill Stadium and Westville Music Bowl to close it out at the end of June. Uh, so pretty, pretty jam packed tour, you know, and uh, covering a lot of covering a lot of ground. So I'm doing um, I'm doing a bunch of the Fiddler shows <laughs> on this tour. <laughs> You're doing the Fiddlers yeah, a bunch of a bunch of <laughs> no, but listen. I can't, I'm not gonna be able to make it, but <laughs> if I could make it to Portland for those shows, I mean, I would, you know, it's just, there's, sure just the, there's just no way I can do it. Two nights in Portland. I mean, that's going to be amazing. I, I, and we've already heard uh, from Portland correspondent Sully uh, that it's going to be, it's, it's high tide this year. High tide. It was low tide sure. last year. Yes. And you, there was a, a stench. It, it was, it was not pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, there so was this really year, stinky, stinky mud at Thompson's Point. <laughs> um, so this year, they will there will presumably not be said no stinky, stinky mud. mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. even uh, but no. Jive's Point, Portland is an amazing town. It's my favorite town to see goose in. It, but way back in 2021, there was a two night run there. I had so much fun. Yeah, uh, at that Great two night run, met a lot of people. Met um, working man's Matt for the first time at that that run. Um, so a lot of cool people. Um, like and subscribe. You know. Like and subscribe, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's uh, it's a fun town. Um, the the venue itself is right next to Bissell, Bissell Brothers Brewery, which is an amazing place. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just I love the town. I'm I'm excited. B's right. It's, it's a great city. It's going to be killer. Yeah, great city. Three then, nights in know, Atlanta too. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. Oh, Indoors the man, in June. Uh, the man in Philly. I mean, that's exciting stuff. That's I mean, we're doing sheds now, so. You know, that's that is a real honest to goodness shed that larger bands like Fish play every not every year, but often it's going to be I'm excited for that show just to see how they fill out that space. It looks like the pavilion is almost fully sold and we'll we'll see how they pack it in kind of like SPAC, but no SPAC this year. Sad face. Sadly. Uh, um, yeah, I'm sure we'll go back there. What's the what's the last date of this tour? Uh, Westville. What, uh, what's the date? Oh, sorry. June 30th. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So this is like, I mean, this is like leg one. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm expecting, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to take July off for sure, and then the latter half of August. 
yeah, just at least like two more runs through Colorado, right? Because like, yeah, two shows at Fiddler's Green. Like, yeah, hey, what's the on. show gap right now? I mean, it's growing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Just, I don't know. I, I guess there was yeah. some problems up in Fort Collins you know, with the sound and stuff. So maybe, you know, yeah. maybe they're just like, nah, fuck that place. You know what I mean? We're not going back to that state for a while. We'll do, we'll do a couple of other shows. Do you know why they, they found out that the jive goose didn't come to the Fort Collins show. Yeah. That was a, a personal conflict. So but the conflict was you didn't want to drive to Fort Collins. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> Transition to Cotter. Let's, let's talk about yeah. Let's 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 talk about Cotter a little bit. You know what what, what we kind of can expect. Things that are going to be different. B. I know you had a lot of thoughts on this. Why don't you lead us off here? Yeah. So you know, I think so. Obviously, you know, we, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the TED tapes because these are the first recordings that we're hearing. My my thoughts are are kind of around kind of what I'm looking what I'm looking forward to seeing happen during this this kind of first big tour with with cotter so i you know i wonder what's going to happen and 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 maybe we can take it just a quick a quick minute on on each of these but these are kind of the three things i've been thinking about the most is how is how will the set list put to if at all you know change or be impacted right i have some ideas of of where that could go similarly how will jams be impacted length frequency style you know anything and then and then a really interesting one for me is how how are their cover choices going to be impacted and so i just kind of throw all three of those out there i don't know if you just kind of want to go around on each one or or if you have strong opinions on any one of the three just kind of throw something out there i mean i'll start with the last point which we touched on this on the pod with peter which is you asked the question in fact um and really got the gears turning in my head thinking about it saying like, well, you know, what's going to happen with covers now that you've got a guy who's never played any of these songs before? And interesting point also is that Cotter, aside from being in Swimmer, made a living off of being in cover bands. I know for a fact he's done like the band thing. We've all seen that. He's done like a Zeppelin thing. He's done like a dead thing. So, I mean, he has an arsenal of songs that he can pull from that it makes you wonder what what the band's going to do to meet him in the middle and say like, all right, like these are the songs that we all know. And then maybe like there are new songs that we can learn. So I, I, I wonder, and I actually, my hope is that we abandon some of those covers that we've really just worn out and we start to explore new covers. What's uh, Neil, what's one that you think uh, could, could use a little rest? Oh, Mustang Sally. Yeah. (laughs) And that one doesn't get played all that often. But that's not. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna say like that. That doesn't get played. You know yeah. that. I, I think they've. I think they've actually done a really good job, like mixing up the cover play. Like less electric avenue, maybe. Yeah, well, that's so, what I was gonna say. I was joking when I said Mustang Sally. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I guess that was kind of like where where that question was coming from. From me, it's like you know maybe it's time to kind of take a fresh look um, at your cover choices and kind of what's been in the backlog and but and, and here's the thing and, and i and I, i'm i'm I obviously I have, I have no way to speculate about any of this but you also just never know like what we don't know out of the cover songs that they played i don't i don't know like did what was one of those ben's favorite yeah you know what i mean and then so then maybe they wouldn't play that anymore like just because it was his favorite or out of respect or for whatever reason you know what i mean so so obviously we're guessing on on a lot of this stuff, but it does seem like a good time when you've got this guy Cotter coming in. I shouldn't call him this guy Cotter. You've got, you know, the amazing Cotter coming in. Man, that's, that's probably not, not not a good name either. But you got this, you know, cool new dude who's a great drummer Welcome. coming in. Welcome. Anyway, the point is, he's got to learn this full backlog of goose songs like that. Right. Like yeah, that's. Exactly. That's that's I wouldn't priority call it a number. backlog. It's a catalog. That's yeah, catalog. That's fine too. That's priority number one, right? Can I interject? Can I interject a question sure. on just kind of on what you're building towards? B, do, do, when as he's learning this catalog, he referenced that like March is going to be rehearsal and it's going to be studious Ooh, and him yeah. learning the catalog. Do they focus on twenty or twenty five songs for him to really learn and learn well, versus? You know, trying to go, you know, wider 
with the catalog? Yeah, so so that's sure. a great that that's a great question, and I think that actually that that point that you're making in that question impacts all three of those kind of larger questions, right? Because kind of you know yeah yeah he's got all this stuff to learn, and so where I was headed with that was okay so covers then okay well let's yeah let's let's look at some of the stuff maybe he already knows right because he, he th there's a lot on him to learn right now so let's sure. not let's I'm, not let's not also say hey go learn every wedding song you know as well go if you don't you don't know shama you, you need sure. to get on it you know what i mean they're not going to do that they're going to say hey focus on this <laughs> so then the other part of your question yeah i mean obviously there there's going to be out of that goose catalog that goose original catalog so we're up close to 80 songs right i don't know if we're is it at 80 yet or not but you're the one with the spreadsheet so yeah so so that's a good question like is it learn all 80 is it like hey let's start with these 40 and then then when we move into fall tour so then maybe some songs sit on the shelf so that that gets into the how does this impact set list right so yeah so I, that that's that's what i find really interesting right is is yeah i mean are they going to play and jam wise are they going to tie all that together right are they going to maybe play if he doesn't have the whole catalog right away well then maybe in, instead of having to repeat songs more often uh, maybe we do some longer jams maybe maybe we throw in longer some more jams. longer jams initially yep. just to Fewer songs longer jams. yeah because he doesn't have to learn how to play longer jams right we we already know they sound good yeah yeah so so yeah i don't know what do you what do you think ryan yeah, I, I think it, it's all very good points. And I, I think part of it is, you know, Cotter is a very seasoned musician. And I feel like the time he's had, you know, he's not starting to learn Goose songs just in March, right? Like he's been probably working since he first played with them, whenever that was a couple of months ago, on, you know, listening to the songs and familiarizing himself and learning the songs. So I'm sure... I'm sure it's going to be more than 20 to 25 songs and you know, they can, they can work on songs while they're on tour with him. And, you know, Peter already said uh, on the pod, like songs might change like arrangements and sounds a little bit because as they revisit them with Cotter, you know, they're going to hear new things and Cotter is going to add a different approach to a lot of things. So I'm really curious to see what, what, what songs look like, you know, a song like a song like creatures that's built around that very Ben, four on the floor groove throughout or a song like that, is that going to look different or is Cotter going to play four on the floor for 10 minutes? Right. So really, really curious to see how songs like that specifically, but you know, we know Peter said the first time, the first song they played with Cotter was silver rising. And we know that they've done Atlas dogs and seven, two, six because of the Ted tapes jams surrounding those songs. So I I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, do they take that Atlas Dogs and 726 thing, songs that don't normally go out into extended jamming, do they take this kind of spur of the moment thing that happened while they were put, you know, practicing with Cotter, and does that hit the stage? Are we going to see Atlas Dogs get jammed out at the beginning of the song or off of a different riff than, you know, when it was being jammed in 2022? There's, there's endless possibilities here, and I just I can't wait until even we get, you know, one show with Cotter because I, I think we can speculate for hours and all day long, but we're really not truly going to know what this is going to look like until, you know, we're either at that first show or watching that first webcast. But then that first um, show might not be the best representation moving forward. Right. Sure. But Just because of it's that's a, gonna it's a give festival. Us, is that, is that a two setter or it's, it's only one set as of right now, they could announce that it's two, but yeah, it's, it's a one setter festival. I mean, that'll be the festival set and, you know, there won't be a stream there because there's no cell service uh, at summer camp. But we'll know, I, like the St. Louis shows, for example. You know, we'll have a much better idea after those. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just building off of what you were saying before about Cotter being, you know, a seasoned player. This isn't, you know, maybe this is his second rodeo, uh, if you will. Uh, <laughs> and, and also referencing like the Peter Pod and him talking about, how at first when they were playing Red Rocks, how the crowd being on top of them and the size of that crowd was at first intimidating. I'm wondering also how that affects Cotter and his playing as he starts playing these huge sort of crowds and venues right out the gate. Yeah, and here, let me just say this because we haven't said it yet. Goose has had a long time off. Even if they did not have a new drummer, we should have the expectation that this band is going to show up 
sounding different. Does that mean yeah. different jamming styles? Maybe. Does it mean new songs? I sure shit hope so. Right? So, I mean, there's new stuff coming, whether it be... Well, it definitely looks like, jam. yeah, it definitely looks like they're in the studio. So that part is really interesting. I mean, they could be cutting brand new songs that they've never released before, kind of like what they did on Dripfield, or they could be recording songs that they've already been playing for a while, which there are now, you know, a, a, an increasing number. But so, you know, cutter aside, it's going to be different. We should be excited about that. Because, I, it's, I mean, when was the last note that they've played? I mean, it's like... How many Goose days? Hampton, right. How many days? So it's over six months. I mean, they've had an incredible break when they finally come back at whatever they call summer camp now, Solshine. So that part is exciting also. So it's not just Cotter. We should expect a very different band. Obviously, having a new drummer is going to change that as well. Just in terms of the, the original count, 76, 77 if you count Don. 76. So, 77. Yeah. What about if you count satellite? Uh, um, think. All right. 77 or 78, depending on whether or not you count, also count down. Everybody has a line, Neil. Some of us 70, have no line. Some of us like, yeah, yeah. Some of us just, you know, whatever. I, maybe I hope, I hope one thing that happens is they stop splitting SOS and Dawn. Uh, Cause it's like, you can't handle like, hearing two songs at the same time. No, it's, I mean, I, Dawn, the Dawn section of SOS needs, you know, the beginning, the, the preamble, if you will. That's so a payoff. That's anyway, a, that's a discussion. Yeah. Point yeah. And, and that's a healthy 77 or so songs. You know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of, that includes like Turkish Hills and, you know, Lily's Tiger and stuff, but there's hey, not, whoa, whoa, whoa. but, 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 but my point is, Lily's my Tiger point is there's not that the many category. songs. Well, I, well that, that, it's in the same category in that they're not playing it. So my point is, that's 60 plus songs that are in absolute regular rotation, you know? Sure. So it's definitely, it's definitely a lot of stuff. So yeah. 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 We'll see what happens. And I mean, I don't know, like, you know, you asked Neil, like maybe half jokingly, like what covers like, does he not want to see? So that that's one question. Then another question could be like, like what direction do you want to see them go with covers? Like maybe if there's anything specific that you want to see, like this or that. And, you know, I think they've, I, I really like what they've been doing with kind of taking some indie stuff. You know, I, I think some of their most successful covers have been from kind of the indie or, or even kind of going into the pop music side. JT, baby. Yeah, probably, we probably, we're probably not going to see that again. Although I think it would be great, yeah. especially if they kicked down a jam like they did the first time. Um, so, so, you know, I mean, I think it's easy sometimes to 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 think like, oh man, like, you know, there's some dead songs I would really love to hear, but you know, I mean, they're just they're just never gonna gonna do much much more of that. You know what I mean? I think I think those that stuff's gonna be few and far between. You know what I mean? So that you then you kind of have to start to wonder like, okay, where's this? Going? And some of the stuff, I I know the national, but like Blood Buzz Ohio wasn't like super high on my radar. You know what I mean? But it's such a great cover, you know. So I think there's going to be things that like you probably wouldn't see coming mixed in with stuff from going as far back as the 60s, 70s, you know, of course, 80s and 90s. I think they'll continue to do stuff that has influenced them and that they like. Sure. From, from... And, and because of Cotter's area of expertise, do we see more band covers and dead covers or the ones that are in the repertoire get played more often? Or do we just do sing silly. songs? Yeah. Well, like, so don't don't matter. do it as yeah. don't do it as the only real one from the two of those bands that's in regular rotation. You know, Half Step you see a couple times a year. Um, you know, Walcott's been pretty rare. Look out, Cleveland, I guess, has been popping up a good amount recently. But you know, do we see one more Saturday Night come back? You know, do we see Up on Cripple Creek come back? You know, they haven't played that since like 2017, I, right? I, there, there's a lot of a lot of stuff. I would be willing to bet that what we won't see is. 70, 70 unique cover songs last year. Okay. Definitely not going to see Oof. that. We will. Yeah, that's a I, lot more than I, I I'd be surprised if we see half of that this year. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Just yep. with, with, with learning all the, you know, the original content. Yeah. We're not going to see any, anything close to, to 70 unique covers this year. In my opinion. What do you think? 30, 30 plus 50. 50 I would plus. say I would say I, thirty plus for sure. 
yeah. I, well, I, and as the year goes on, I'm sure we'll see more come back into rotation later in the year once Cotter gets more familiar with the originals. They're going to repeat covers, you know, it, versus playing a new cover more this year. Sure. Than they were than, averaging than two or three years. a show, right? So two or three a show, and then you're also not playing as many songs. So yeah. 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 So yeah. Way. So maybe that per show goes down to two or or a little bit under. And then we just see more frequent plays because out of those 70 covers, there's a ton of, you know, one and two times played. You know what I mean? And I just don't yeah. think, I just don't think they'll have the luxury to, to be like, well, and, and, and also like 10 of those last year, you know, last year, obviously, you know, with, with, with Ben, it was like, okay, well, we, we all have all this shit down so we can learn new oh, covers and, and all this other stuff. No so, problem. Yeah. so yeah. So I mean, obviously that's going to be a shift. And so I, I think, I think far fewer unique covers, which I, I you know, I'd say I'm, that's something I'm probably looking forward to. I'd rather hear more repeats. I don't get the, you know, thatch fatigue or this or that. You know what I mean? Like, play your play your great songs. Like, you don't have to give all these songs three, four, five show gaps. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they're great songs, and and you you have a new lineup. So I, I think I think maybe we'll see more frequent plays from you know, their, their, their originals. And, and then you'll see that kind of grow that number grow and then fewer, fewer cover, fewer unique covers and, and maybe some more repeats on the cover side versus playing more unique covers. Well, it is, it is about that time of the podcast where we open up the sack, you know, we dive in, we'd like to thank all of our, our last minute contributors, but yeah, we, we, we asked people, you know, for some questions, um, you know, or comments, uh, things for us to talk about in relation to the bracket. And oh, is that what the mail sack others, is? Otherwise, that is. Well, I you know appreciate what? the I think the, I think for, the mail sack listen, is ask us people, anything. This is, ask this us is anything. Our, this is already, by the way. Yes, the mail, our, the mail sack right. belongs to the people. Well, this is our the, the proletariat, if you will. The, it, this no. Is, this is our our most accessible episode ever. Do you know how short this is compared to other things? People are hearing the mail sack now. Who have never heard it before because it's usually three That's, or four that might hours be true, in. actually. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's reasonable. So this is the mail sack. We do it at the end of every episode. If you don't know, um, usually we're you know a little yeah, more. You can ask here, about yeah. You can us. you can ask us go. questions. Us. You can ask Ryan about living in Toronto, what that's like, or anything else. Toronto related no. to Toronto. You could ask. Kev about his yeah. hashtags and like, you know, what's Her keeping cuts. it high and tight. Yeah. yeah. What's it, what's in Kev's portfolio. You can ask Neil about his uh, lack of a haircut and how good it looks. Can that, ask hair is, about Eggie. That, that hair is flowing. Yeah, ask me about Eggie. Oh man, please. We got, we got a lot of different, we got yeah. a lot of hair, different hair Josh, directions he's happening jealous. actually on the pod. Neil, well, Neil, Neil's, so, ki- Neil, Neil, I, I just want to say Neil is killing the hair game. Like Peter Pod, I complimented it because it was yeah. just like, wow, look at he's out there. It's all wavy and he's still growing it right now. He looks like, you know, he's keeping it intact and like, dude, tuning it I, up and man, it's well, looking good. I mean, you two, when, when I say you two, I mean Jive and Kev went like Metallica load era AAT. <laughs> <laughs> somebody had to like fucking like make this yeah, right. Uh, so I, I started growing my hair. I was like, well, I mean, if these guys picking are picking up the slack, got to yeah, balance it so. out. Anyway, so back to the stack. Uh, B, why don't you go first? Uh, we, we had to, we had to send B, uh, a sack message here because as everybody knows, he doesn't have Twitter. We faxed it to him. He, it took, it took a minute for him so, to get, yeah, and, uh, and I don't even know if I, I out, yeah, I'm not sure I'm uh, the best you know, the person to answer this question to be honest, to because, there. okay. So it's, it's from our friend at six R zero M seven. It's, it's Adam. It's Adam. Adam. We all know. Adam. But but so okay. So he says, uh, "This is a but he he did a bunch of questions. Uh, you can do one question, or you can do like a multi multi parter. Why do you think right so many it. people were disappointed by the final four this year? And was it just that the most vocal people didn't speak for the majority? Was it poor luck on seating bracketing?" Was it shenanigans? So, I, I I don't know. I guess were a lot of people disappointed on it. When I if I look at the final four, I mean, like I like we said, I mean it was surprising. 
but I wasn't disappointed. I mean, I, you know, these are that no, I think no, I was, I think I thought, Clearly. and we probably talked about this when we did the first bracket pod, like nine months ago. And it, it was probably like three months ago. It was only two months ago. Yeah. It's like three, <laughs> two, two, two months it was, ago. It was like five weeks just ago. Short of two months ago. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just kidding. Seven weeks so ago, yeah. I thought years. that the, this bracket was so deep. We talked about how deep it was. Well, so then, what does that mean? If you think about well, what does that mean? Well, then theoretically, if it's deep, that means it's not going to all be chalk and it's not going to be, you know, just these four are going to run away with it. You know what I mean? It, this field was so deep that I'm not surprised, you know, by, by that. Now, if I but if I think about his question for like what I think what he's trying to ask is of the people that were disappointed, like, you know, you know, why do I think it was, or what do I think the reason was? I would say that definitely it's people get into these camps, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, if Portland T is not going to make the final four, then I'm, then I'm disappointed. Or if Seattle Echo is not making the final four, then I'm disappointed or Bonner Thatcher, whatever it is, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the vote count was good. I don't, I don't know that, that there was, maybe as much disappointment as, as some people might think from my perspective. But I would say that as far as the, how the final four kind of, you know, rolled out there and it wasn't what everybody expected. No. So maybe some people were disappointed. Why wasn't it what we expected? Again, I don't think it's poor. I don't think it's poor seating. I think things were seated pretty fairly. And I think the voting was, no, no huge shockers except for a few things like Portland T or whatever. But I think that uh, I think that everybody had a good time. I think that we all had fun, and I'm not disappointed. That was another observation from the sack, actually. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes here. This is a real quick one uh, from Goose Driptick. Was I hope everyone had fun, or did everyone have fun? And of course, you know, back to B. Yeah, we all had fun. Go ahead, Neil. I was just going to say it's a phenomenon, right? There are these gems, and I think we can do this thing where we listen to all of them and we can objectively say they're all like in the same category. But the interesting thing about jam music is that people develop deep connections with pieces of music. We all have, right? We wouldn't be recording this podcast if there isn't some piece of music that even Goose didn't write that we didn't deeply connect with. You can't predict the the amount of people that are going to deeply connect with a jam even though you're trying to listen to these and objectively say, all right, this is like what I see in terms of like quality with these jams. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes there is just something about that jam that makes people deeply connect. And you cannot predict that. That is what happened in the bracket this year. That is actually what has happened in the bracket in past years. Not so controversial, right? But also I do want to make the point that this is not the lowest ranked song to have won. We didn't say this earlier. But the, in 2020, the Madavon that won was ranked what, Ryan? It was a three seed. It was a three seed, but which three seed was it? Was I, it... I don't I don't remember what the yeah. rank. I don't, I don't have so, I mean, so that's an also interesting point. This like, so if you're looking at this this year and saying like, oh, man, the final four is really disappointing to me. And the fact that this song that is a two seed one is really disappointing to me. Well, dude, it's been done. This has already happened. This has happened years and years ago. Hey, so 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 just real quick. I think Neil said a lot of what I was trying to say faster. <laughs> so I appreciate that. I, I think I was just trying to find a, I think I was just trying to find a way to say like, man, I, I don't like to think about anybody being disappointed, I guess is like, that's what I'm struggling with. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think I struggle with the word disappointed and I know he, I know Adam means it in a different way that I, that I'm taking it, but that's a hard word for me to take when we talk about the bracket, you know, because I don't want anybody to be disappointed. You know what I mean? But 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 here's the real quick one. People here's the real quick part. The 2020. Oh, that was, so that Neil was quick, talking about 2020 yeah, the and the and the Madavan. Okay, so that that would have been like the top three seed. I mean, it would have been the first three seed. But do you remember? It was the, some just, of the songs that ranked ahead of that. So obviously, Factory Fiction, and then Bingo uh, Bingo Grippo Hosewood. People may not know. Hosewood. And Hosewood, yep. and then there was a fourth big one, which was uh, Bingo Drive. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So Killer yeah, team. I didn't. I had that Mad Event below all that stuff. Yeah. Well, it, that that Mod of On won for one reason and one reason only, and that was in the Hosewood versus South Farms Mod of On matchup. Peter advocated on Twitter for the Mod of On to win, and then the Mod of On. That that's that's you know we always bring up Neil's trauma around Peter murdering Hosewood in cold blood. So, <laughs> so what we say, fun. what we say now is that is that Peter uh, Philly echoed that Madavan. Yes, no, he actually. He, I mean, he stealth farmed Madavan the Philly echo. The funny yeah. thing, also that some people might not know about the 2020 bracket is in the finals, Peter advocated for Factory Fiction against the Madavan, but the damage was already done. <laughs> Yeah. He played himself. He played himself. There was a, it was over at that a, point. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's a comment on that one where he commented a factory emoji. I remember, and at that point, it was like you, you, you already, you already. Also, I, the, I think the factory. I think maybe a lot of people didn't get the factory emoji. Honestly, that's why I remember thinking at the time. I was like, I was like, I know what you mean, Peter, but I don't know if all if everybody's gonna get that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that that was a fun bracket. We we all had no idea what we were doing. You know. um, right. But it all worked let's out. Take, uh, let's take ten more questions. All right, let's let's <laughs> next sack here uh, from our good friend of the pod, edible enthusiast, Captain but Eugene Incredible. Bourne enthusiast. Uh-huh. Also, it's in the name, um, and those two things kind of go hand in hand. I've heard from. Yeah, they they go hand in hand. And I agree with him on both counts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, agree. Yeah. Hashtag agreeable, Kev. I mean, yeah. Just go- <laughs> yeah. Disco biscuits enthusiast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what does it? What, that, what mean, doesn't he enthusiast? That's, that's, that's listen. That's he's he's yeah. Captain Incredible. Like he, his superpower yeah. is being yeah. enthusiastic about literally everything. And speaking of things that he's really overly enthusiastic about, uh, he talks about it in his sack here. We would have a, had a much more exciting finale than Hunger Salt and Philly Echo if. Peach Redbird had made it into the bracket. Cedars have blood on their hands. And a little shout out to Neil in the first reply here uh, from friend of the pod, Matt, don't go back to Rockdale. We're still mourning Peach Tumble from 2022. Uh, Neil's, how much hey, let me tell you something about Neil that I've learned. So, <laughs> so, 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 there, so, so there's... What have you learned? For, 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 for most people, it's Drive goose attendance bias or no attendance bias, right? And then for some people, it might be you could throw you add Colorado in or whatever. But for Neil, it's generally no attendance bias, but he does have peach attendance bias. <laughs> yeah, or not attendance. Yeah. He was at Peach in 2023. Yeah, but I, I wasn't at the Peach Tumble. It's, I mean, so well, it's, in any case. Um, imagine, imagine if they had played that while we were on the rail at Peach in 2023. Yeah. No, I think oh, it was like Peach bias and Peach attendance bias. Just the Peach, peach bias. I have Peach just... bias. Yeah, not Peach attendance bias. I mean, Jeff has Peach attendance bias. Let's let's be honest. Well, here. I mean, uh, on your birthday, and when you're when you're oh, Captain yeah. Incredible, and they do Hollywood Nights and Seven Two Six back to back, man, like, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have attendance bias. Yeah. Um, and what, one more quick one before uh, I throw it to the next sack. Uh, Uncle Fred's Jive just commented, chances of me three-peating next year. One percent. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I don't know. I'm, I'm <laughs> just. <laughs> oh, Hold on. Wow. No said, hesitation on that one, B. Are you, are you, are you booking? Are you sports booking? Because I'd like to. Okay. Like to so if we're going to put it, next, if we're going to look at it through, <laughs> through that lens, I would say. Handicap it. Well, I'm not going to yeah. handicap it, but I would say he has less than a 33% chance of three-peating. And that's probably high. This is hard to do. Can you imagine it's so hard to to repeat. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying that that he, that he doesn't have the skills because I know that he does. I'm just saying, man, if I had to put money on it, I just feel like it's it would it's going to be so hard to three-peat. All right. Tune back, tune back in in early March 2025, and we'll see whether Kev is giving B. No, we're gonna have him on. Kev we're gonna have him on before the before the bracket starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about this. Yeah, we're gonna we we're talk gonna get his happen. thoughts on his his own personal projections for finishing. All right, uh, Kev, do you have a do you have a sack for us here? I do have a sack. It's from a uh, friend of the pod, uh, 902 Vickers. Here, okay. here we go. Uh, and it's not a friend so- of the pod. 
Here we go again. And so it's not so much of a comment as it is a picture. And I'll paint you the picture. It's of the famous scene from Goodwill Hunting, uh, where Will has exited the bar uh, after his engagement with the English uh, pedantic uh, English major. And he's, you know, slaps up the uh, girl's phone number on the wall and says, you like apples? How do you like them apples? Uh, but instead of her phone number, it's Philly Echo. What? Yeah. In How do you face. like them apples? How do you like them apples, yeah. How do you like them apples? As a Boston guy, I felt like I needed to do that part. Uh, yeah. And what, what do you say? I'm what do sorry. you say in response to that, Kev? I say the best jam won, man. The the the, the people voted, and the best jam won. Well, Kev looks on that more favorably. I would just the say most favorite jam won, and that's what the competition is about, not what the you know Jam Ryan Storm thinks should be number one. So, question from at teamed by Hockey Anna says, "Why wasn't yeah. Scam Thatch on the bracket?" My answer is, I have no fucking idea why. Uh, uh, I know I mean, why because like, not why. enough people ranked it. And yeah, yeah. I, I would yeah. like to point to Anna as somebody who did not submit a bracket. Oh, yeah. So she so could right. have helped get Scamp a Thatch on the bracket. Every vote. And, and that's, you know, going into election going into election season, it's a good thing to bring up. Like everybody, you know, I'm just one vote. You know, what can that matter? And, and to Anna, I'd, I'd like to say, like, if you would have submitted a bracket, you know, how many people were in your camp that didn't submit brackets that could have gotten S Camp Thatch into into play? My last question, which is from Don't Go Back to Rocktail, who always asks great questions. And he says, how does Echo compare with the three previous winners? And I think we already touched on this, but I think every, everybody should have a chance to answer this. Ryan, what do you think in comparison to the three previous winners? I would I would rank Echo uh, third out of four, uh, I think. Um, you know, I, I would put it above the, the South Farms Modavon for sure, but I think it's definitely a step below the Perry Western Sun and the Raleigh Modavon. Yeah, I, I, I'd probably I'd probably rank those exactly the same. I mean, I think I think the Modavon's hard. That 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 Modavon from twenty twenty, it's hard for it to stack up against anything. Certainly from this year, you know what I mean. But I, but I, but I agree that Rally Madavan and Perry Echo, they're just they're kind of more adventurous for me, and they just they just go to go to different places, more different places that are all incredible places. So I think it's tough. I think I think it's definitely you have the three and then a gap, and then South Farms Madavan. If we were doing t- like a tiered, sure, I would say there's a, there was a gap between. I would say there's a gap between two and three as well. That's harsh. That's harsh, bro. Fair. All right. Harsh Follow up question, Kev, if you have nothing. I got nothing. No, me neither. <laughs> will Will Cotter sing on Butter Row? Jive Goose. So yeah. look, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna get into anything that's like disrespectful or anything to anybody. I, but I, my but my honest thought around Butter Rum has been I'm wondering if like I don't know, like are they gonna play it? You know what I mean? Like just kind of Ben had a role in that song. So again, like I just, I don't know what, how some of these things might be delicate and I don't know. Is that, is that one of the very few originals, unless there's things that we just do, unknown unknowns, is that one of the very few or only originals that they might say, Hey, you know, do we not play this or do we approach it way differently? All right, kidding. Yes. Uh, one last one, and then we should wrap. One, one yeah. last one each, and then we'll be done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, no. This one, this one, because we're a gambling crowd. Folks like to talk about betting. Overs and numbers how, and how things dare like you. that. We saw 15. This is from At Milo Believe. We saw 15 new originals in 2022 and only three in 2023. What's the over-under here? How many are we expecting this year? New album. I would say, I would say five five to ten but most of them in the later half of the year again with Carter so, coming so in you say five to ten that's the range yeah. he was asking he was asking the guys who bet somewhere in between i think i think we get a new album and it's 10 songs a new album may, and part of that may be songs right. that they have played so what are we are looking for year. over under on new originals is that is that the question yep. yes i would put it at six hmm. i'm over i'm over I'm uh, saying under. I'm saying four. I think that, and here can I tell you why I think it's I think it's higher than what some people might think because I think that the band is sitting on a lot of 
unplayed originals. I think I think they have a I think Rick writes a lot of songs and I, I'm not saying no one else does, but Rick writes a lot of songs. They are sitting on songs that have been played and rehearsed, but not broken out live. And so and so now is an opportunity to all the points we were talking about earlier with Cotter coming in. Now is an opportunity to say, hey, let's explore let's finalize some of these new songs with Cotter. You know what I mean? Like let's get him involved in this process. They want to get him involved in being an equal, true part of the band, a contributor. You know what I mean? And so that's the way you do that. So I'd be shocked if they didn't take the opportunity to say, man, we've got all these songs we haven't played yet. Let's, let's work them out with Cotter. And then boom, now we've got Cotter goose originals. Time will tell. I, I I'm on board with that. 100%. 100%. Yeah. All right. Have we explored the sack enough? Yeah, I think I, I dragged I us so. through the sack pretty damn hard at yeah, the end we've, there. Yeah, we've, we've sacked it up. Uh, but we, yeah, we'd like to thank everybody uh, for listening to this episode. Uh, record short, always almost there. Recorded episode. It's efficient. It's a, it's, 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 the, it's a model of efficiency. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and and if if anyone you know has made it this far, if you listened to this and you haven't heard, if you hadn't gone and listened to or watched the podcast we did with Peter back in February, definitely go check that out. It was an amazing, amazing conversation. We're and already put a lot of our references in context. Yes, exactly, and we're yeah. already looking forward to doing it again next year. You know, we love we love potting with Peter. Regular regular that's, contributor. That'll be it for us. Uh, we will see you guys. Regular contributor, six man. Peter. Uh, It'll, he'll yeah. put it in his bio. Fifth man. Yeah, it will. It, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Um, well, we will see you guys next time we see you, which will be soon ish. I don't know. Deep. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe something something in the pipe. D- B is feeling uh, mischievous tonight, so who knows what could happen. Uh, everybody have a fantastic uh, day wherever you are, whenever you're listening to this. I will see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening. Peace. Oh, fruiting bodies. Mushrooms. Wait, one more question for the mail sack. <laughs>